What is going on, guys? I'm Ryan Roots. And I'm Micah. And together... No, that's, that's just not going to work. Kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. So, guys, this is Micah. Um, we, I wanted to bring Micah onto our YouTube channel because he's got kind of like a different kind of perspective on reselling. And we wanted to kind of bring that to our YouTube channel. A lot of people ask us all the time, you know, we're, we're full-time resellers. We don't have kids or a job and i know a lot of you guys who watch us have kids and a job i got them <laughs> and, my, and micah micah not only has a family and a full-time job but he also resells on the side yeah. so he has a different kind of take a different perspective um, and he's local so we wanted to bring him on to kind of talk to you about reselling and how he manages his life and reselling all together so why don't we jump into it micah and we can i can ask you how did you get started in reselling start there so reselling came to me probably about a year and a half ago maybe mm -hmm. almost two years ago really and um and i picked it up and just slowly kind of grew into it. how did you start so i started um with uh having a kid so uh, having my our first uh, you try to resell uh, your kid or yeah. um if i could anybody wants to buy it yeah sure take them <laughs> oh my god easily i mean he's pretty cool so he'll go for a high price but i'll take best offers uh, <laughs> easily we uh we had our we were having our first uh child and um we started to realize the expense that came with that and um at the same time, we also had um, a negative expense of student loans. Um, okay. So there was a kind of a quick realization of like, wow, what are we gonna do? And at the same time, um, how are we gonna do it? And and we realized like student loans and kids, like they don't go hand in hand and like I can't get rid of them both. So I, I gotta so, pick one, right? So did you start reselling to pay off your student loan debt? That was the goal, yeah, okay. that was the goal. That was the conversation we had was, you know, I'll never forget it was kind of like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Mm. And this is, you know, it's gonna add an extra thousand a month and we'll pay it off and in so many years we'll be done and the kids will be, you know, just getting in school. I, I never forget it, yeah. Okay. So that's how it started. If you don't mind me asking how much how much debt did you have in student loans? So we uh, had at that point $70,000. That's a lot. My wife's a nurse, so okay. that's like yeah. a, that, the nursing. I thought I had a lot, but <laughs> nursing and doctors, that's tough. Gotcha, okay. So you had quite a bit of money tied up in student loans. Yeah. Um, and then, so you started reselling to get out of those loans, but you have a family and you yeah. have a job. How did you start reselling? Like, what was the first thing you did to buy and sell stuff? I wanted to, I have an entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. I, you know, I, I like being my own boss. Mm -hmm. You know how, like, making your own money feels so much better than somebody cutting you a check. Sure. And um, It's so what I, your time is worth. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels so more, like... The self-worth, you know, that like you've brought value into this world because sure. you created the value. Right. So I've always had a, a desire for that. And I wanted to do um, internet marketing. And okay. I, I have a degree in marketing and I thought, well, this is, you know, perfect. This mm -hmm. is easy. Uh, so I got into that and quickly realized, and, and the way I got into that was that um, a buddy called me and said, you know, hey, I took this course in internet marketing and you should get in it. And I couldn't afford it. And I had a kid coming and mm -hmm. he, I said, man, I can't afford it. And he said, well, hey, do this. This is what I do. Go to garage sales and you buy things and yes. then you sell them on eBay. Yes. I'm like, there's no, no, there's no way. <laughs> I asked them like probably a thousand questions, vetting the That's whole so thing. And you know. so is that how you started then going That's to garage sales? Okay. Yeah. So we started the same way then. We went to garage sales, okay. and we bought stuff, and we sold it on eBay. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Hundred bucks. I think I took out hundred bucks that day. Okay. And I was like shooting high. I thought like, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be awesome. Do you remember what you bought? I remember everything I bought that first time. Do you? Okay. Absolutely. What everything. did you buy? What did you buy? So you spent a hundred dollars of yeah. Uh, I don't think I spent a hundred bucks. I can't remember, but that was your I, budget. Hundred. That was what I figured. I didn't know what I was getting into, right? Okay. So I took out a hundred bucks, and um, I remember everything I bought. Um, I've sold everything I bought except for one item, mm -hmm. and I just after a certain point, I just kind of decided to keep it as like a memento. Oh, like you a trophy. Know? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Just kind of, I'm big about that kind of stuff, you know, because it brings back memories. So quick. like you can look at it and be like, that yeah, was that was yeah. my start. And it's a quirky kind of like it's like this nice like Italian wine base, you oh, know, cool. with the cancer. That's awesome. And um, so it's kind of cool. So people ask about it. I'm big yeah. about like conversation pieces. And um, and that's what it was. It was like, hey, this was a, that was I think the first item I bought, and I was right. supposed to buy it for ten and sell it for sixty. Okay. And it just didn't kind of work out that gotcha. way. 
Um, but uh, what happened was I at the end of the day, it was a Friday, so side note, there's still good garage oh, sales on okay. Friday if you can do it. Yep. Because sometimes you get the people that do Friday and Saturday, mm -hmm. and they you kind of pick off the good stuff before I agree. everybody does on Saturday. We used to always go out on Fridays. Yeah. Fridays and Sundays. Because Sundays oh, Sundays you get like the scraps. Yeah. But a lot of times the scraps are like cheap and the stuff that people missed. I remember one time when we first like got into reselling garage sales and stuff, I rolled up to a garage sale on a Sunday and I got to the lady's house and as I literally as I opened the door to get out of my car, she was like, Come over here and take whatever you want, take it for free. Yeah. Um, and she had good stuff. She had yeah. like new tags, polar raw floor and stuff. So even if you're donating half of it, you're still, you know, yeah. like send it back to Goodwill for another thrifter to pick it up. You that's know? why that's why I still tell people like one of the best ways to start in reselling is to just go to garage sales. Yeah. yeah. That's that's easily the most lucrative, efficient, fun. Right. And, you know, and in like we were talking about it earlier that I'm I don't do it much anymore because of the kids and I've I've transitioned to different things, but I miss it because of the, all the stuff that I got for myself. For and yourself, my kids. Exactly. Like, exactly. I'm missing out on all these things I, I want. It's that so I don't want funny. To pay like all the for. time, I'll look around the house and I'll be like, "Yep, got that from a garage sale. <laughs> yeah. Got that from a thrift store." It's like a badge of honor when you tell it your is. friends too. Like, hey, I paid is. five bucks for that. Yeah. I'm like what? So you started with garage selling. Yeah. Um, you turned you turned a hundred dollars into. Do you remember like how much you spent? What you what profit? You I made? don't. I don't remember. Like, well, I really didn't put much into it after okay. that hundred bucks. Maybe another hundred bucks. Um, but um, I think like I think my eBay the last twelve months is at like seventy thousand this year. Not Whoa. to I'm not numbers, Ooh. but to put it in perspective, I guess. And so, but that's part time. It's part time, yeah. It's one hundred percent part time. Okay, well, hold on. Let's back up first for a second. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Before we yeah, get yeah. there, Micah and I met about what six months ago. Yeah, we uh, we met. Uh, I, I joined your uh, mentorship, right? right? I and found you on YouTube. Feb you were in the first round of mentoring that we yeah, did. Yeah, okay. I found you on YouTube um, through kind of that whole you know um, you know community, and mm -hmm. I you'd said something in one video that made me realize we were we were in Florida, and right? And it kind of just went from there, and. You opened up your mentorship, and you probably helped me the most out of any of them. Like the, everyone has their own niche, sure. But I, you know, and that's kind of why we've, I think we've become friends. We kind of have the same style and, and, and mindset. So I followed you, and then you opened it up, and I joined, and mm -hmm. you know, just kept taking your advice. Right. So six months later, I know that your goal was your goal was student loans, right? Yeah. So that's why loans. I started. Okay. Yeah. Pay off student loans. I think we had like seventy grand at that point. So you said you said that you've made since you started reselling or started like really reselling on eBay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your business now in the last twelve months is at like seventy k or something like that. Something like that, like sales wise around there, I guess. How are your student loans coming along? So I just paid off seventy five percent of them actually last night. What? Yeah, That's yeah. great. Well, what is that? A dollar? Thirty seven thousand. Thirty seven. My wife couldn't believe it. She still, I still kind of can't believe it. And is, is that entirely from reselling or did you take money from like other savings or? Um, no, that's entirely from reselling. Like That's crazy. I dude. kept it all kind of separate. So I know, get a separate account, keep it all separate. It helps. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. it was a big deal. It was, it was, it's still kind of surreal. It's bittersweet, you know, because you're paying. Sure, you're, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but you're knocking out a goal, which is crazy. I think the goal was actually to do it in like two or three years and so and I you did, did in six months six months yeah. that's awesome dude that's yeah, tough and by the way guys let me just say this first micah is i'm not paying him to be here no he did take our mentoring you course want to? no you i don't want to be here. come on no. i got student loans still i got no. love <laughs> um but he's he's honestly here as my friend and again because yeah. we wanted to bring a different perspective to our youtube channel um we don't have kids we don't have a full-time job so let's go back to that then yeah how, right. how do you manage that like that it seems like to me it seems like too much right it's a lot yeah so, so what advice could you give to people because i know a lot of people who watch our channel are either part-time resellers and um, where they have families and a job nine to five so yeah what advice could you give to people to be able to manage that dude i don't even know where to start with advice um, give me two things how about that okay number one is easily communication like i touched on it you know before communication is big because you know with your partner with your wife absolutely your with your wife maybe with your kids depending on what age your kids are um you know uh, side note always involve the kids with the process mm. too um but absolutely free, free labor oh easily <laughs> easily mine are more like they're more counterproductive because they're sure. so young 
So my son's always stepping on things that I've got to sell and I can't sell anymore. It's like, no. Our dogs do that. No, don't step on that. It's not a stool. Like, yeah. come on. Mochi's always sleeping on the inventory. Yeah. So, um, but communication, because my wife, um, she's not the same as I am. You know, we're kind of the opposites attract situation. You know, Wait, when you st first started reselling, did she think you were crazy? Absolutely. <laughs> like, bad <laughs> shit crazy. Bad, like, nuts crazy. That's awesome. Like, she's like, I just can't, I, like, I, I never forget, like, my sister was visiting town too. Yeah. And so I bring home a bunch of stuff. I think I've been doing it at like a month, so I was starting to feel confident. Right. And I brought home a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, look at all of this. Like, I'm going to make $500. Like, I knew at that point, like, right. because from the app and everything, um, I knew that like I was gonna make 500 bucks and they're just looking at me like they're sitting on the couch My kids are running around. They're like you're crazy. Like I'm like I'm, my sister I'm like you've got to do this. This is solves all your life's problems. That's awesome. And they're like you're nuts um, And so yeah, she thought I was crazy. In the okay. Beginning. Yeah, absolutely so, so then where where was the switch like where was her aha moment where she kind of went from you're crazy to okay I think that you, you know this could actually help yeah so I started taking your advice and um, I you know uh, we had talked and, and I told you I, I ran it like a business not just the guy selling things out of his garage is that so advice I, number two yeah is that a piece of advice? Uh, that's like like 1.5 okay okay like but 1.5 is like running like a business because people can see through it if you run it like out of your garage which I did in the beginning gotcha and then I noticed that things like just went like this when I started taking better pictures with a white background, using better descriptions, using, you know, doing thank you cards, shipping on time, things of that nature. Like if sure. you were a brick and mortar store, how would you do it? Great customer service when you have issues. Right. Things like that. Um, so it really like took it up a notch. Okay. Uh, I started buying wholesale. And when I started buying wholesale, it kind of, she doubled down on the crazy factor because it's like now I'm bringing in like bulk Things. You're filling up the garage. Yeah, yeah. and it's like she doesn't know why. Like, it's you more know, money. Two hundred of this certain item is gonna sell too. Like, she didn't get it. Sure. So, once that started to sell, mm. and I communicated with her and saying like, "Hey, look, this is what it is," and I kept it in a separate account, so she doesn't think like I'm I'm going crazy pulling you know savings and pulling from other you know revenue streams and saying you know she re saw that it's separate. Sure. And I communicated with her about mm. it. Um, and, and explain to like why, why I'm, you know, at nighttime, we're not watching movies anymore and why, not, you know, we're not maybe talking as much. And, and a lot of that came from like communicating and setting sure. the same, like setting goals and, and showing her along the way that this is what's going on. This is how it's evolving right. and this is how it's growing. And once that started to kind of really kind of, you know, like, um, you know, multiply, and she saw the money that was coming in. Then she was like, "Okay, I'll wash the dishes. You get like to this work. is a real yeah, business. Like this, this is, is real. Like I'm not just like you know fooling around upstairs sure. and you know and and just it's a hobby. I'm making money that's going to change your life. And gotcha. She bought in and she's been a champ. And I like that's awesome. It, she's been a huge part of the whole process. I can't. Like it, I told her, I was like, this isn't me making the money. Yeah. Like this is us, us. because I'm not changing diapers and I'm not doing dishes. And I'm doing other things, but she is, and and so the communication is, right. you know, what did that for sure. So communication was number one. Yeah, running like a business was one point five. Yeah. So then, what is the second piece of advice? Set your boundaries. Set your boundaries. What Make, do you mean by yeah. that? If you have a job and you have kids, is this set your boundaries? Because it can it can in, uh, consume you, and mm. you have to remember that your first job, like your nine to five, is what's paying is what's paying your bills. If you lost that, like what would happen? And to Smart. not cheat on that job Smart. and not to act ethically in that manner. You know, searching for things on Facebook while you're at work, really ethically is probably not the best thing for you to do. So if, Agreed. if you're working, let's just say nine to five, put your best nine to five in. Mm. And then from five, which I call the five to nine hustle is, is, is when you do that work and set those boundaries because it will consume you. You won't be doing good at your nine to five and God forbid you lose that nine to five. Right. You know, you have to set that boundaries. And then if you have a family, you additionally have to set boundaries for your family mm. um, because, you know, that's the most important. I mean, it, it, things will come and go, but your family is your family. So you're saying you've got your nine to five and then yep. you're, you're five to nine. Create your boundaries for your nine to five. Mm -hmm. And then create your boundaries from the five to nine. Okay. All right. And so if you have a family in between there, you need to fit family time. And on the weekends and, and things of that nature. You need to fit the time where, you, like for me, I, from when I get home from work to when my kids go to sleep, 
it's my kids' time. Gotcha. And everything revolves gotcha. around my kids from those hours. But set that time for those kids and give them your dedicated attention. No, no either other or job, just your kids. And you'll find that you don't need to give them that much time. They'll get, they get tired with me mm. before I get tired with them. And then I move on to, you know, my side hustle. So now at this point, it's been, how long have you been reselling? Like, like two years. Two years say, reselling. Yeah. And then over the past like six months, you've really taken it to another level. Yeah, say absolutely. That? Yeah. You've managed to pay off your student loans, yeah. which is crazy, guys. $37,000 of student loans. I know that there's a ton of people who watch us who have student loans. So to use that as a goal, I yeah. think, is a big thing. So let me ask you this then. Now that you have those, we were kind of talking about it a little yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Now that you have those paid off, what's your next step? Like, how do you see, oh, man. how does reselling fit into where you are now? Tell me. You tell me. <laughs> That's why I took your course. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I'm, I don't know, honestly. I just did it last night. So it was kind of like this huge goal that I'd set for myself. And um, I achieved things that I never thought possible. Yeah. And time spans that I didn't even, I would have never even thought right. to make it a goal. And and you know, and that's what we were talking about. Is like, kind of, where do I go from here? And 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 fitting it in. And one thing that I can say that I've seen from you, though, that I've noticed is that you've really started to kind of streamline your business. Yeah. So focusing on the on the tasks that actually make you money in the easiest way. Yes. Yeah. That's an interesting thing. Like you're yeah. not you're not buying something for a dollar to flip it for twenty dollars anymore. Yeah, no. Now you're buying twenty things for yeah, right. You're, so you're, so are you focused more on like wholesale and going that route? Yes. Yeah. So um, Ali in the back short there. break with Ali in the background with the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> so absolutely, things that I can do more efficiently is what I focus on now. Um, 2.5, you know, is that, uh, is buy your time, you know, things like, I mean, I guess the biggest one, honestly, that I can say, and everybody says it, and I'm just kind of more of, you know, a proponent for it now is buy a thermal printer. Biggest thing that ever changed my <laughs> life was buy a thermal printer. I totally yes, agree with buy that. A thermal That's so printer. funny. Like it, we're <laughs> thrifters. Like you can find one for yes. like 75 to a hundred dollars. I still remember the days of printing out the label on oh, a piece of paper, cutting it, taping around all yeah. the corners. You know what I did is I, so I actually set a timer one day. I had like 20 items to ship mm. and I set a timer and I wanted to know what am I spending cutting and shipping items and break things down because Seconds make minutes and minutes make hours. And that's an hour I could be spending with my family. There you go. You know, yeah. And that's the way I looked at when it. When you put it in that sort of perspective, yeah. that's that's good. And, and that mu you, you will make, if you can buy time, you will always make it back. I promise you. Yeah. So buy time. I remember the one time when you called me, you said you got a big pallet of, um, I think it was like VCRs or something like that. Yeah, like DVD players. DVD yeah. players. And yeah. you're like, Ryan, I just don't have the time to go through all these yes. and check them. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, they were yeah. like store returns or something like that. Yep. And I said, Micah, you have to look at your timeline. How much is your time worth? Yeah. Does it make more sense to just put an ad out there and hire somebody yeah. to come in, pay them 10 bucks an hour just to go through your inventory? So that's a great, that's a great point. And one the, what happened after that conversation was, mm -hmm. and if you have a nine to five it makes it really easy because whatever that company's paying you on an hourly basis that is what you're you to them at least not maybe not to you but sure. to them that's what your time is worth right sure. so that's at least a good starting block so i could say you know for the sake of conversation it's 20 bucks so all right so obviously my time is worth 20 dollars to somebody out there sure. right so and you can go from there and realize okay well if it's taking me an hour to ship it I just lost twenty dollars. I spent twenty bucks on my own labor. Right. Right. And so you had said, "Hey, hire somebody," and I, and I was like, "No, like that. You got to be big to hire somebody, right?" And then and I really stepped back and then I thought about it. I said, "Okay." And I had a, I had a family friend that was going through college. I said, "Hey, man, do you want to make uh, ten bucks an hour?" And he said, yeah, of course I want to make 10 bucks an hour. That's a great wage under the table, you know? Yeah. And um, <laughs> don't, don't under the table. <laughs> so he started taking pictures for me, still works for me. Cool. And it made my life a lot better. And I streamlined a lot of things through that. Awesome. So, and, and not just that, it changed his life too. Because now he's got a great job that makes him some extra money. Right. And I mean, I never thought that I would, the way I would feel about kind of helping him with that. Right. And, and sometimes I really don't have much for him to do, but I still, I, I just find myself, you know, hey, do this and end up paying him more than 10 bucks an Plus hour. It, it honestly, it feels good to help somebody else out too. Like absolutely. that's a job that he would have never had. Absolutely. It does, it feels good to help somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and it, 
you can't you can't put a value to that. No, absolutely yeah. not. So let's do this then, um, Micah. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Like I said, guys, I'm gonna bring Micah back on the channel. Yeah, probably. Yeah, a few times. Oh, I think because right. you have a perspective, like I said, that we just don't have. Because yeah. we don't have kids, we don't have a job. <laughs> um, so, and I feel like mo honestly, most of the people who watch our channel are either stuck in their nine to fives trying yeah. to get out of it. Or trying to look for a little bit of extra income to pay the car payment or the electric bill or something like that. Buy a so nice grill. Buy a nice grill. Buy a new yeah. watch, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, so, Micah will definitely come back on and give you guys some more advice. I think he's a wealth of knowledge. I've actually learned quite a bit from him as well. And like I said, we've become good friends. So, yeah. um, it, it's cool to bring other people on and get a different take on reselling. You can't just be stuck in your ways no. and not be open to taking on different kind of information. So, thank you so much for being yeah, here, Micah. Absolutely. Do you have anything, uh, anything else to say to people who maybe are struggling trying to figure out that work-life balance anything that could maybe help those people get to the next level you know um the biggest thing is that uh is is get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable oh that's a big one yeah that's, that's such huge. a good one and dude. um and and don't be afraid to fail. and just understand that you're gonna fail yes you're gonna make mistakes and every time i've made a mistake i've if if i made a mistake that cost me ten dollars i've learned from that mistake that's made me fifty dollars Beautiful. Yeah, I was just about to say thing. it's it's crazy. Like reselling is a business that you can fail and lose fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not something where you're starting a business, taking out two hundred thousand dollars in loans, getting rent, yeah, and hiring like, employees, and then failing. Yeah, and it's a marathon. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Like I, what I've, right. I guess I've kind of, I, I guess you could say achieved now. I kind of wanted, you know, a year ago, but mm. it just it takes longer than you expect, and it's a marathon. And, yeah. And you don't need a bunch of money and you don't need a grand idea and you, you don't need, you know, these things that kind of you're, you're meant to feel that you need to start your own company. Right. You can do it, you know, with just some hard you work. You can do it. Hard work and you can do it. <laughs> you can do anything. Well, thank you, my friend. Yeah, absolutely, we appreciate man. it. Thank Guys, you. leave a thumbs up on the video for Micah being here. Too. Leave a nice comment. We'd appreciate yeah. that. Um, and then also our next mentoring group is starting up on September 15th. We'll be sending out the emails on September 1st. We only take on 75 people at a time. Yeah. Um, and the spots will up do it very quickly. Do it. <laughs> Again, do he's it. not being paid no, to say that. I think I even paid for the beer today. <laughs> it's yeah, a, don't do it. Yeah, do it. Do yes. it. But I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We hey, really what about do they want to see me again? Maybe they no, don't no, even want to see, see me again. Get out of here. That's enough. I know, I know. Maybe they don't, though. Maybe yeah. they don't need any more videos. We'll definitely bring Micah back. I think he should start his own YouTube channel, seriously. Because, <laughs> I mean, the family aspect and the job, it honestly is a it's a different take. So Yeah. Yeah. But thanks again for being here, my friend. Absolutely. And, thanks uh, for having me. Guys, thumbs up, comment, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out. See ya. Thanks for watching.